years ago, an Englishman, Oliver Cromwell, said these words. The citizen soldier must know what he is fighting for and love what he knows. In that spirit, Cromwell created a new army of the finest fighting men England had to that day known. We've done it again. Britain has made another new army. These men are tough. The experience of three years of war has gone into their training and into their weapons. And each man, as he goes into battle, carries not only his arms and his technical military skill. Like the old Ironsides, he takes something more, a weapon of the mind. But this didn't happen overnight. There was a time, early on in the war, when this weapon lost its edge. The men who had come back from France and were then standing by, waiting for invasion, had been through a mental blitz for which they were unprepared. This is the way they talked. Don't talk a lot of... Well, it was in the papers. What was? About the secret weapon. They say he's got a flying bomb with wireless direction finding on it. Gotcha. Then why hasn't he used it? Perhaps he has. Well, he didn't take long to clean up in France. Well, you ought to know why. You were there. Yes, that's right. Fat lot anybody knows, except the stuff they tell you. We don't know anything, chum. Here. Supposing he's keeping it up his sleeve. Keeping what? The secret weapon. Look, why should he? If he had what you said, he'd win the war. Everywhere men were seeking yeah. for the truth. Don't say he has got but it. doubt and rumour can't be dispelled without a knowledge of the facts. These men were unprepared for mental attack. But every form of attack breeds its own defence. Against a mental attack, a new sort of defence was required. The mind must be trained as well as the body. So in the summer of 1941, the war artist embarked on an experiment. So there it is, Williams. The Army Council have agreed to our scheme for instructing the soldier in current affairs and the progress of the war. The first rule is that it's part of the army's timetable, like weaponry. And it's the job of the regimental officer, just like welfare or any other form of training. That's grand, A.G. The first thing, I think, is to find the right uh, title or trademark for this new training in current affairs. Well, I've been thinking about that. I suggest the word ABCA. ABCA? What's that mean? Well, it's A-B-C-A, which stands for Army Bureau of Current Affairs. Uh, an extremely nice short word, and also suggesting the particular job we're after, which is to teach the Army a new kind of alphabet. The alphabet of world affairs, the progress of the war, and all that. That sounds OK, Williams. There's one thing we must be quite certain about. No propaganda, no long-winded lectures. The main thing is discussion. It's a big job, but I believe it can be done. The experiment began. What's that? More stuff from the war house? Abka. Oh, yes. I seem to remember an ACI about that. Desert warfare, camouflage in Crete. Hmm, looks interesting. It seemed a lot of tripe to me. Why, you'd have the men arguing the toss with you. Yes. Is it going to be good for discipline, sir? Why not? If your discipline's going to mean anything, it should stand up to free discussion. Well, we'll see how you get on. OK, sir. I'll have a shot at it. Well, now, I expect you're wondering what this is all about. We're starting something called APCA. We're going to have an hour's discussion every week on current affairs. And it's going to come out of working time. <laughs> but it's not going to be just a rest. Now, the idea is this. We're going to have a different subject every week. I'll tell you something about it, and then you'll give your ideas. Get this. You're going to do the talking, not me. <laughs> Let's start off with something that's in the news these days. Desert fighting. Did any of you read that bit in the papers about the 21st Field Brigade at Tobruk? They were terrific. It might have been us. What I want to find out is, what was the 21st doing at Tobruk? Why are we fighting in Libya at all? What, in other words, is the point of the whole campaign in the Middle East? Uh, Nils, do you know what we're up to in Libya? We're uh, fighting the Germans, sir, and the Italians. Good enough. But why are we fighting them just there? Do you know, Field? 
Yes, that's one reason. Any others? Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Half a minute. Let's have one at a time. Uh, yes, Corcoran. Well, it's like in the last war, sir, with the Berlin to Baghdad Railway. They're after getting all of the Middle East, Arabia and such, so they can get through to India. Yes, sir. All right, Hawkins. It's the last line of the Empire, sir. It's the place where East meets West. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if we didn't have the Suez, we couldn't have the Navy in the Mediterranean. And besides... OK, you'll have another chance later. I see you've all got the idea. Obviously, we're out to protect Egypt and Suez. As Hawkins said, they're vital to our control of the Mediterranean. But I'd like to give you another idea. We're not going to be on the defensive all the time. We're going to attack. We don't know where just yet. But isn't it possible that the attack may start from that part of the world and be directed at the weak spot in the Axis, Italy? Ammunition for mental warfare. Every week, the Army Bureau issued a new pamphlet. An up-to-date exposition of a topical subject. Not to impose an official view, but to help the soldier to come to well-balanced views of his own. But ABCO could only be as good as the officer who ran it. And for him, the Army started courses in how to conduct his own discussion group. You've not got an easy job, but you'll find that the more trouble you take, the more it's repaid in the liking and respect which your men have for you. Running a good discussion group is a technique which you can learn like any other. That's not to say that officers might not have their own ways of doing things which are best for their own units. One common fault is a tendency to lecture. I know that it's pleasant sometimes to hear the sound of your own voice, but that voice must be checked. So always remember that you are not a lecturer, you're a chairman. Now, for instance, however good you are, don't try to make it a brilliant one-man show. An increasing process of suburbanization takes place. All of the behest of industry which demands a concentration of workers near the factories. Hence the mushroom growth of the peripheries of cities, which tends to choke and strangle the life of the centre. Yeah. Yes, just one moment. Now, that is the easy, unplanned way for cities to develop. Now, if we agree to plan, we must plan functionally. Now, that sort of thing gives men an inferiority complex. On the other hand, it's no use having a chairman if he's not going to hold the chair. So you want to avoid the opposite extreme. Well, if you want to see how people live, our house is all right. Don't know about yours. Yeah, speak for yourself. You wouldn't have slums if people were educated. You want some educator, please. <laughs> Abka soon developed beyond the discussion room. But once a hundred new ideas suggested themselves, the wall map with the day's news instantly taped to the spot on the world where it happened. Photo displays. Men could soak in the subject before they came to talk about it. The Wall newspaper. It gives a man a proper pride to see his name in print. And that starts something else that's very important. A sense of his own value as an individual. And there were other bright ideas. Next question. In the Midway Island battle, the American fleet destroyed and damaged how many Jap warships? Five, nine, or 20? I will repeat that. In the Midway Island battle, the American fleet destroyed how many Jap warships? Was it five or nine or twenty? Twenty, wasn't it? Shut up. Next. How many aircraft did they destroy? Ninety-five, a hundred and forty-seven, or two hundred and seventy-five? As the war expands, so do men's minds. The more we know of our allies, 
the stronger the bonds between us. Now, I want you to ask yourselves, how was it that a nation which only 25 years ago went through all the horrors of civil war and revolution with famine, plague, and the complete destruction of its industry, was able to build up an army powerful enough to stand up to and lick the Germans. I think it's their feel their own, their own country. You just can't beat that sort of people. That's all right for them. What about us, though? We don't own our country. That talks to a lot of rot. Why do you think that's rot, Robertson? This is our country. And if there is injustice, inequality, it's our fault for allowing it. Why not write to your MP about it? Yes, that's just it. We've got a parliament, and it's up to us to say who goes there and to make sure they do the job when they get there. There's no use bellyaching and doing nothing about it. The idea behind ABCA has taken root in the army. Our American allies carry on the good work of getting to know one another better. Can I have another question now, please? I'll take this latest question. Does Lend-Lease work both ways? Does Lend-Lease work both ways? Well, that's a very good question. Major Llewellyn, have you something to say on that? Yes, it certainly does. It's a heavy two-way traffic. The entire British Commonwealth of Nations is contributing to the American effort, even as she is contributing to yours. Britain is giving us planes and guns and tons of other equipment. A lot of it's going to North Africa. The range of items is terrific. For example, I believe I've seen a list somewhere that goes something like this. Barrels, bayonets, batteries, bolts, bars, blankets, bedding, bolts, bedding, bleach, bolts. I'd like to add to that, if I may. This isn't a war of dollars and pounds. Lend-lease is simply this, that every country gives in proportion to its means. We're all going to give our shirts to be Hitler, and that's all that counts. So, by encouraging a wider understanding and knowledge of the facts, ABCA is stimulating the British soldier towards victory. Its focus is the individual soldier. For in the end, that's what war boils down to. A man in one uniform fighting a man in another. The individual Briton against the individual German. In what way do they differ? The German is intelligent. He too is trained for initiative and thinking for himself. More than once he has defeated us in battle. To defeat him, we must know him and know ourselves. Through Abka, the British soldier sees the Nazi in proper perspective. He's one of the best fighters there is. They're a fighting race. They're never happy unless they're at war, mucking up somebody else's country. Ah, but he doesn't do it just for the love of fighting. We don't get people fighting like that unless they believe in something. They believe all right. I don't think we're so different as people, but we're out for different things. They've had it dinned into them for years that they're lords of creation. And everybody else is just fit to be their slaves. That is the way Abco works. That is the other weapon the soldier takes into action. A weapon of positive knowledge and belief, forged first as a defense against the mental warfare of the Nazi, but now in its turn, serving as the sharp edge of a counter-offensive. But there's more to it than that. When the war is won, when the soldier has once again become a citizen, it is the tool with which he will build the peace. For that is his next job, and it may, in the end, prove a tougher one than winning the war. We recognize that the new world is in the building now. Abka is helping to win the war by giving the soldier the weapon of truth and understanding. It is also laying the foundations of an enlightened society, which will one day enjoy the peace. <laughs>